Hello boys and girls, Brad the Guitologist here. In two previous videos, which I will link in the description and at the end of this video, I shared the story of a reel-to-reel -reel tape that found its way to me after more than 50 years of obscurity. The tape, which was purchased at an estate sale in a small Iowa town in the late 1980s, was given to me two years ago by a fan of my channel. It was created backstage at a 1967 Johnny Cash concert in Seattle, Washington, and contains lost interviews with some of the biggest and most influential stars of the 20th century. I went into more detail about the provenance of the tape in the first video, where we also listened to the first interview contained therein, one between Seattle DJ Bobby Wooten and the late Carl Perkins, writer of Blue Suede Shoes. They talked a lot about the disappointments of Perkins' career that some have suggested hurt his chances to be an even bigger star than he was. If you have not seen that video yet, I suggest you go watch it first by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen. In the second video, we heard a lost interview with Johnny Cash. In that interview, Johnny had a lot to say about anti-war protests and hippies, which challenged the prevailing views held of Cash that he was a fence-sitter on political topics before 1969. That interview can be heard by clicking this link above. But in this video, we will present interviews with two Country Music Hall of Fame alumni, the Statler brothers and the Carter family, as they existed in 1967 with mother Maybelle Carter and her daughters. Maybelle, of course, along with Sarah and A.P. Carter, was there at the so-called Big Bang of Country Music recording sessions in Bristol, Tennessee in 1927, the same session that also launched the career of Jimmy Rogers. All around the water tanks, waiting for a train, a thousand miles... Maybell and her Gibson L5 archtop provided the rhythmic pulse at the very heart of this new popular musical form, and the Carter family are rightly recognized as some of the very first popular music superstars, forging their career at a time when ad-supported radio airplay and record sales were brand new industries. Maybell Carter's influence on Western popular music cannot possibly be overstated, and to have an interview with her on this tape is particularly cool to me. So we'll begin with a short interview with the Statler brothers before moving on to the Carter family. I hope you enjoy. Uh, what what did you said you found in your hotel room here in Seattle, Washington? Uh, we, well, we found a bed and uh, a couple of lamps. <laughs> Come on now. Well, let me tell you what we found. Listen, you're, you're broadcasting right now over over every radio station, Armed Forces Radio Service in Vietnam. Now, what'd you find in this hotel room in Seattle? Well, I'll tell you, we found a magazine. It's a standard magazine to have an, a little yeah. Seattle Guide is the name yeah. of it. And it had listed in there, and it, and it stated, it said, no liquor is sold in Seattle on Sundays, but there are bootleggers, and if you happen to know a name, or can, it's always available to get some and also if you run out, run out of little pink pills here's a number to call and it gives you the number you got we kidding. felt like it's a sort of a strange thing to find in <laughs> made you feel right at home <laughs> well, i didn't say that it didn't say anything about girls <laughs> no but i think it, i should have kept going so next, page. <laughs> next page might have found it. we're talking to the Stadler brothers backstage at the opera house in seattle washington they're one of the finest groups that i think has come along in a long long time they're having one hit after another now and uh, I think that I'll ask them to identify themselves individually and talk to you a little bit. Well, I'm, my name is Harold. You identified and, yourself. Yes, sir. Talk. Okay. Uh, let's say I'm about five ten and a half. I've got. <laughs> I'm a good-looking fella. <laughs> that's all I know to say, Bobby. All right, you sing bass. Yeah, that's what they tell me. I thought sure that you was the second tenor. No. Well, Harold, uh, that's all you can think of to say. Yeah, that's it. You don't know any dirty stories? Yeah, I'm thinking one right now. Forget it. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about you. Or you talk about you. Well, I'm Don, and I might say Lou is not here right now. There's four of us. Yeah. And he's uh, he, <laughs> he's in the next room, and he'll be out in a minute. 
And, of course, over here is Phil. He's the baritone. He's the one right over there. That's right. Well, we'll let him talk in a minute. Tell us okay. a little bit about you. Well, uh, there's nothing much to say about me. I, I prefer to talk with the Statler brothers if we can. <laughs> well, I took care of that. Let, let's talk to you. I'm Phil. I sing baritone. I'm married, and I've got three, two boys. Excuse me, not three. Hmm. And I'm glad to be in Seattle, but it's a long way from home. Where is home? Virginia. Virginia. You are a Shenandoah long way Valley. from home indeed. Now, how many Statler brothers are there? None. There ain't no Statler brothers. There never was such a thing. Never was such a thing. Uh, so there's some cats that own some hotels, but that's all we know about. Is that right? That's all. What's your, what's your name? Reed. Harold Reed. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What are all the boys' names? Don Reed. Now, he's my brother. We're brothers. But you're not Statler? No, we're not. No Statler. What's the other boy's name? Lou DeWitt and Phil Balsley. I'll declare. Where'd you come up with the name Statler Brothers? Oh, uh, we just picked, pulled it out of the air, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well, see, we, we operated under all two or three other names since we've been singing. And uh, every time we'd find one, well, we at this time we were just a weekend quartet, you know, at home. And every time we'd find one, why, there'd be two or three other groups around the country we'd find that had the same name. So we decided to go way out on a limb. We did. Well, uh, something's done very well for you. I don't know if it's the name or the talent or what, it. but you're coming up with one hit after another. Are you all from Virginia? All of us are from Virginia. What part of Virginia? In the Shando Valley, Stanton, Waynesboro area. I'll just bet you a dollar you got some Virginia boys listening to you right now. They're Boy, farther from home than you are. Yes, that's the truth. And if we have, and not only to the Virginia boys, we'd like to say hello. We really would. And hope that we'll get to see some of these fellas either come over here to see them, or that we hope, mostly hope that they can come home to see us. Absolutely. How long has it been since you were in Virginia? Uh, well, we've been gone about two weeks now. Is the sun shining down there and oh, the grass I, green? I just talked to them a while ago, and they said it was 90 degrees in the shade at home today. That's right. Are the girls still as pretty down there? Oh, getting prettier every day. Well, I don't declare. I own four. You got four girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a big one and three little ones. <laughs> Well, that ought to be about enough, I guess. Yeah, that's all I can handle, I'll tell you that. Well, I sure appreciate you boys uh, talking to me and to all of the boys in Vietnam, and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you very much, Bobby. There they are, the Statler brothers. Backstage at the Opera House with me right now, the very famous Carter family, whom I'm sure you've heard of many, many times over the years. Mother Maybell, where and when did the Carter family first start? Well, we started in 1927 back in Bristol, Tennessee. And who was the Carter family? Uh, that was uh, A.P. Carter, who is my brother-in-law, and uh, Cyril, his wife, was my first cousin, the three of us. Yes, I, I can well remember listening to... Uh, to you on some of these radio stations back in those days. Keep on the sunny side of your theme song, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Uh, did, uh, did the girls start singing with you and they were pretty young? Uh, well, uh, one of them started singing when she was about four years old, the youngest daughter, Anita. Uh, we were out in Del Rio, Texas, working in 1938 and 39, and she went out with me and she sang some with me on the radio. and. Uh, She'd sing duets with me, and she'd sing solos. And then uh, I guess it was uh, 40, 19 and 40, 39 and 40. Uh, I took them all out, and uh, our sponsor asked me if I had any more kids could sing, and I said, well, I've got one I know can sing, but the other one I won't promise you because she's never tried. <laughs> you will never guess who the other one was. <laughs> She was always kind of the tomboy of the family, and she stayed with her daddy all the time on motorcycles and driving trucks and things like that. But I came home on Christmas, and I took them back with me, and I stayed home a week. And uh, by the time I got them back out there, they were singing 15 songs in harmony. In harmony. So I got home, and I got June down and uh, taught her to play the auto harp. And at that time, Anita didn't play any instrument, and uh, Helen played the guitar, so they just played the auto harp and guitar like the old Carter family, you know. 
and they played for themselves. Nobody helped them, and uh, they uh, they could sing 15 songs when I took them back to work. Well, I imagine <laughs> they've learned a few more. Yes, they have, yeah, quite a few more. And Anita, she started playing bass fiddle in when she was about 10 years old, and of course Helen took up the accordion, and June plays guitar now, and she plays the auto harp. In fact, Anita plays the auto harp too. They all play a little bit. Well, I listened to your show tonight, Mother Maybell, and you know, you're is better than ever. Well, thank you very much. We've really enjoyed being here. This is my first trip to Seattle. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think back in the old days uh, that you were would someday be almost a legend in country and western music? Uh, well, no, it didn't enter my mind <laughs> back then too much. You know? Well, that's the way it is. Uh, a lot of the, the younger people now think of the, uh, the Carter family as being the real, legitimate folk group. Well, uh, there wasn't too many, I'll tell you. When we started, that was about it, us and Jimmy Rogers. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we recorded one day and Jimmy recorded the next day at, at the same place. Mm -hmm. In Bristol, Tennessee. The very yeah, first song you recorded, do you remember what it was? Oh, yes, very well. <laughs> Bring Me Under the Weeping Willow. Still one of my favorite songs. Yeah, Were you nervous? I, no, I, I didn't know what was going on. See, then I had no idea of ever making a record, and and they come and told me that we were going to go to Bristol and cut some records, and I, we got ready to go, and... I asked a foolish question, I guess. <laughs> I said, must I take my guitar? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had no idea of ever making a record, but it was quite a thrill, you know, when we got up there and started uh, working, and they played them back to us, you know, mm -hmm. to hear yourself sing and for the first time. And yeah, that was all quite new then. Oh, uh, yeah. Phonographs were new, records were new, and Hardly anybody knew what they were doing, That's including right. the record people themselves. That's right. But yet they were successful right from the very first. Uh, the Carter family became a household word, uh, certainly over uh, all of the South and soon uh, throughout the biggest part of the world. Yeah, they've been uh, all over everywhere, I guess, uh, the Carter family records have. Have you any idea how many you've made all together? Mm, I think they were around 300. That's a lot right. of records. Uh, now, I wouldn't be certain that that's right, but I think it's pretty close, 300. Oh, yes. Uh, I think probably we've done uh, over 300 by doing them over, you know, for different companies mm -hmm. a lot of times. Well, that's a lot of records, and you're still coming out with them. We have a new one of yours <laughs> now, and, and they're still getting this better all the time. Well, thank you very much. We You've been a... Uh, Appreciate you playing our records. You've been one of the one of the star, top stars for many years now, and I sincerely believe that you will be for a long time to come. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your kind words. <laughs> I'd like to talk to some of your daughters, if I may. Uh, Helen, you closest. Oh me, yeah. I'm the old one. You get to talk to me. Oh, you're the oldest daughter. I'm the old daughter. That's right. I stand. Oh, you can sit down. That's oh, right. that's fine. I'll just stand. Okay, we'll both stand. <laughs> Are there uh, just the three children? Just the just three, three girls. That's it. And you're really the oldest. I'm the old one. I'm not going to ask how old you are. <laughs> well, you, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm old enough. I tell you. Uh, what 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 is it like to uh, be a member of a show business family for ever since you can remember, practically? Well, I tell you, when I was a young girl, I I didn't really realize. You know, you don't realize. Your mother goes off and she sings and. You don't realize she's singing. She's just gone somewhere, you know. You, it doesn't. I can remember when it first dawned on me that my mother had some kind of uh, uh, a reputation around the world, you know. And and I was amazed because to me she was just mama, you know. Yeah. That was all there was to it. And the other little kids you played with back in those days, they, they, did they come and tell you, "Hey, I heard your mama on record"? Well, strangely enough, not too much. I guess every. Uh, the kids in the neighborhood, we were raised in the country, mm -hmm. and everybody, we was all cousins, that's right, we were all kin, I guess, that's the reason, so they weren't surprised very much about hearing us. Well, ever since Mother Maybell brought you out that time and started you singing, you've been, you've been part of the group ever since. I've been singing 
pretty well steady ever since. I was off a year or so, but I, I got a, a neck injury in an automobile. I was collision from the rear. Somebody hit me, but, and I had to miss a year's work, but pretty most, pretty near all the time I've been working. Well, it's, it's a good word. He's picking cotton. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you're sure doing a fine job. Thank Abby. you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Helen. Which is the next daughter? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter, Bobby. You, it just doesn't matter at all. <laughs> okay, sit down, Junebug. All right, let's just let let's let's lay down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> no, I'm one of the lazy ones. I'll just sit down here. You were the other girl. You wasn't sure if you know how to. I was the other it. one that didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you think she's made up her mind yet? Well, I tell you what, Helen could sing harmony and Anita could sing harmony and it was all I could do to stay on the lead. I wanted to sing what they were singing. They had the easy parts. That's what I felt like. And I, I just had the worst time even holding on to the lead. And the only way I managed to stay a hold of the lead was that uh, Anita could pinch good. <laughs> and she, she could pinch like everything. And she could tell, even though she was younger than I was, she could tell the minute I got off. And the minute I got off, she'd wring a piece out of me. And boy, I'd get right back on pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, uh, uh, haven't you had uh, uh, some education and like uh, charm schools and Sort of well, I I took a little charm work on myself there, but I didn't let too much of it get on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went a couple of years to New York and studied up there, and I enjoyed it. I I had fun. It was I, dramatic school, wasn't it? Yes, I did go to dramatic school in New York a couple of years, and I did some dramatic work too, some in TV, and uh, I enjoyed doing that. But uh, you always come back to your own, regardless of. What happens, you know? <laughs> so I love country music. I love uh, folk music. I, and I love being a part of it. And uh, it's good to be back where the girls and I can work together again. We've all worked single acts. Uh, Helen worked by herself. Mother's worked by herself. And so has Anita. And so have I for years. And it's good to have us all together again. We all feel good about it. Well, we can tell it, too. I sat out front tonight and watched you and... And you, you can get, you can just feel it out there. Well, thank you, and Bobby. It's a wonderful show that you do. Well, I appreciate that. And incidentally, much. congratulations on all the big hits you're coming out now with your little sidekick, Johnny Cash. Oh yeah, yeah. I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky that he decided to kick me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very thrilled about uh, being asked to record with Johnny Cash. He's been such a big artist down through the years, and has, uh, I think, probably the one of the biggest artists that we've had in the country in folk and the western field. And uh, he could have sung with a lot of, of girls who could have sung better than I did, but we just happened to do a little old song that people seem to like, and I've enjoyed singing it with him. And then we got another one, and then we cut an album. So that's all we've done so far. But uh, if we never do anything else, I'm pleased to have been able to have done that. Well, I'm sure you're going to do many more things because you can't keep that kind of success down. Uh, as I was telling Johnny and some of the others earlier, the entire show, the entire Johnny Cash show, is one of the finest country music shows, I think, in the well, world. Well, we've all worked together for such a long time. I've worked for about six years with John, and then the girls and I have recorded with John. We've done background work for him for about five years, something like that, about five and a half years. So we've been actually a part of his recording unit, and then it's good to be able to get the same sound on the road. It's good for him, it's good for us, and so... The Statler brothers, of course, they worked with us too, you know, and we've all just worked in together and everybody tries, so I do think we have a good show. Well, I certainly do, June. It's been a pleasure to talk with you, and I know all the boys here in Vietnam are enjoying it too. Well, thank you very much, and all of you boys, we hope to be coming to see you soon. We've been talking about it for quite a while, and we'll just we'll just wade the mud with you. We'll come see you. i got a feeling there's a bunch of them wanting to come see you too. Well, that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs>
this is Anita Carter. You're the youngest girl. I'm the last one to come along, I'm afraid. Well, well, you certainly are uh, one of the pretty ones, too. Well, you bless your heart. That's nice of you to say with my stringy head. How, <laughs> how old were you when you started singing? I was four. Well, I, I worked for nothing there for a couple of years before <laughs> Mommy finally started paying me. <laughs> and then I think I got about a quarter. <laughs> were you really four when you first went out on stage? Yeah. Uh, mother was on uh, radio in Mexico on XERA. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was such a big radio station back then. And, of course, it didn't mean much to me. The, the biggest thing to me was that you could go out to the candy stands and you could hear the radio playing through a tin can, you know, into a four-year-old. This is really something. Mm -hmm. And even the fences would play. The hubcaps played everything. You know, the, the radio station was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I, I can remember that. And uh, I remember the uh, Mexican children when, uh, if I'd have a bag of candy and, and they'd ask for candy and I'd offer it to them, you know. Like back home, they'd take a piece of candy, you know, from you. Well, they took the whole bag and ran, you know. <laughs> I lost every bag of candy I got that way, but... Uh, four years old. Yeah, I was four. And do you, uh, do you know how old you were when you were on your first recording session? Well, we didn't uh, record uh, for quite a while, so the old uh, uh, family stopped recording, and uh, we worked uh, doing transcriptions and radio work for years, but the first recording session that we did, I guess, was about 48. 49, something like that. So uh, that was, uh, oh goodness, That's, you know, I was quite a bit older. Who, who was singing on the session? The three girls? Well, there were three girls and mommy, and uh, we did uh, some things with Chet Atkins. That's when Chester went to work uh, with us in Knoxville before we moved over to Springfield, Missouri, and then from there we moved on to the Opry. And we had, we were lucky enough to have him work with us and help us a little bit there, you know, for quite a while, because uh, he plays quite a lot of guitar. Pretty good picker. So, yeah, he's a pretty good picker, and he was really handicapped with our band, I tell you, because we were we didn't know what we were doing. But uh, he had to uh, kind of be satisfied with us, you know, because that was what he toured with, and uh, it was kind of fun. And like I said, we did learn a lot of new chords and, and everything from him, so it was a help to us. Well, if I know Chet, I bet you that he is very proud and honored to have worked with you. Well, he's an awful nice man, and uh, he's over at Victor, where I record now. And uh, even though he's not actually my A&R man, I see him pretty often, and I work on sessions that he does A&R, uh, singing background, as June mentioned before. I record with Porter Wagner and Norma Jean and a few people like that. But uh, that's kind of a different subject. But he's still like a brother to us. We Speaking of recording, uh, you're not only coming out with some good ones with the Carter family, but you're now coming out with some good singles on your own. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know how much luck I'm having, but I am trying. And uh, there should be another one coming out uh, right away that uh, was written by good old Harlan Howard. He's a pretty good old boy, and he writes a good song every now and then. And I twisted his arm and made him give one up to me. Well, he's written <laughs> some good ones, and I'm sure this will be another. Are you married? Yes, I am. Uh, my husband is Don Davis, and he runs uh, Harlan Howard's Publishing Company. I uh, see. <laughs> That's how I got the uh, song, <laughs> now the truth <laughs> Anita, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I'm sure that all of our boys here in Vietnam have enjoyed it, too. Well, I hope so. It's a pleasure to get to visit with them. Like June said, I don't know uh, if we'll be able to come uh, to see them, but we sure hope that they'll all be coming home to see us real soon. Thank you, Anita Carter. Thank you. All right, guys, that'll do it for this series on this particular Real to Real tape. I want to thank Dave Massey for donating this tape and sharing its wonderful contents with the world. I am proud to be the custodian of it, and I'm honored to be the one chosen to digitize and preserve it for posterity. I hope you all enjoyed this series, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to see more in the future. And if any of you have any more long-lost interviews with music legends in musty closets, send them along and we'll preserve those as well. But for now, you all take care.